we looked at digital formats and delivery methods for multi-platform content. So on page 86 of Next Level Radio, chapter three. So we said a digital format is any content that can be represented, stored or transferred in binary digits of zeros and ones. So any text, any pictures, uh, videos, etc., anything can, as long as it has been produced in a digital form, be transferred from one computer to another computer. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. So we're talking about the digital age, um, an age characterized by the widespread use of PCs, computers. Okay. Then we said the most obvious digital format of an audio experience is when radio stations simply stream their broadcast platforms. Okay, so if you listen to Metro FM and you go onto their website, you can simply stream Metro, okay, online. So these streamings, these streams are available on the state-owned websites, on their apps, or through third-party websites or apps. So the most popular radio online streaming services, TuneIn, Radio Player, Simple Radio, and Radio South Africa. Okay. Then we spoke about um, online streaming website directories that you get, and a couple of examples of these, Radio Tower, webradio.fm, Streamfinder, and Penguin Radio. That shouldn't be an E, that should be an I, Penguin Radio. So here, the format of the radio station stays exactly the same. Content and music are simply streamed digitally, so nothing changes. Okay. Um, then I mentioned iHeartRadio to you, which is free, and they have an all-access app that they launched in 2017 where you can skip songs uh, that the station is playing that you don't like with unlimited skips. You can save songs from the radio to your playlist. You can have ad-free radio. You can instantly replay songs you like. You can listen offline. You can get unlimited access to millions of songs and you can create unlimited playlists. So another popular streaming strategy is to create different formats as offshoots of the mother radio brand, so the main station. So what does that mean? It means we have one radio station let's um say for example uh let's say that east coast radio is an example okay and that they are the mother station and they have a niche uh trend that they are trying to follow so this allows the radio station to follow trends in different niches that might exist in their listening market and produce content that they might not have enough time to dedicate to the on air so they might have a station that they call Gold FM, which only plays um, old school music or older music, but they use the exact same content okay, as East Coast Radio might be using. So in the United Kingdom, an example is Absolute Radio. Rock AC station has streaming and digital audio broadcasting, so DAB streams. Okay. Um, so the majority, well, the other stations that they have is Absolute Classic Rock, Absolute Radio 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 1000s, and Absolute Radio Extra. But the main station is Absolute Radio, and all of these stations are simply like the child stations of the main station, okay? Because the content will remain the same on all of these except for one, okay? Because there's only, there's one that will be only a music station but playing all the music that the original station will have. The rest of them will have all the content, but different music. Do you understand that? Does that make sense to you? I see there is something in the question box. So any, do you understand what I, when I'm saying there's one station, but they offshoot formats from the mother radio brand? Okay, do you understand that? If you don't, you must please tell me so I can explain it in more detail. So let me use South African uh, a station. So it's um, an example. They're not actually doing it, but let's take an example. So let's say there's Metro FM, okay? Metro FM would be the mother radio station. So the main station. 
But now we see that Metro FM realized that um, there are other niches, okay? So uh, they see that there are other trends in different niches that exist within their market. And so now what they do is um, they don't have time to add these to the main Metro FM website. So now they create a new streaming site called <laughs> Baby Metro. And this thing plays more hot urban songs than Metro FM tends to play. So they have a more niche focus, but their content is exactly the same. And then they have another one, which might be Grandpa Metro, um, where they play perhaps music that are, that's 20 years older. So also urban, but um, older urban only on that specific station. I like that law. Um, but the content again remains the same. And then they might have another one, which they call Metro Music. And Metro Music only plays the music that would have been on Metro FM, none of the content. There's still an affiliation with the original station. So I can have one station like Metro, and then I can have 10 radio stations that do the, that does Metro's exact same content, same times Metro does the content, but with different styles of music. And you can also have one that might only play the music that Metro FM is playing and no content. But it's still affiliated with Metro because it's all the music that Metro will play. See it? So in the UK, the station, the main, the mother station is Absolute Radio, okay, which is a rock station. They then have a couple of other radio stations that they are affiliated with via either DAB or via streaming. And these are Absolute Classic Ooh. Rock, Absolute Radios, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and Absolute Radio Extra. So that's an additional seven radio stations that they have produced that is affiliated to the main mother radio station. Okay, so to the main station, which is Absolute, Absolute Radio. So why do we do this? This gives the listener the ultimate power in tailor making um, music content specifically to your taste while still enjoying the live talk content that the presenters are doing and the presenter's character and the personality on air because we like certain presenters, right? We like listening to them um, along with the news and weather and sport and traffic, okay? It might be that you just don't like all the music that they play. So this gives you more a way of tailor making it to suit your style. So if we look at this from a speech format space, podcasts are the most popular speech-based digital radio format. So digital radio, okay, being the important name there. So podcast, uh, the most popular speech-based digital radio format. So when we're trying to define a podcast, a good starting point is to think of it as internet radio on demand, okay? Because it's on demand, I can go and listen to it at any point. The listen experience is such that you can listen from different types of devices, okay, all over, not simply on one platform. Um, so what do we call that? Really simple syndication, okay, RSS, really simple syndication, because we can deliver the content to multiple distribution points at the same time. Well-known podcast service so like iTunes and Stitcher Radio um, are examples of these multiple distribution points. Okay, podcast allows listeners to enjoy a piece of content um, at their own convenience, which you can't do with traditional radio audio because it is live. So either you hear it or you don't, versus a podcast that is on demand. So you can subscribe to podcasts, which are usually free, simply by clicking on the RSS icons or the subscription button. What makes a podcast so exciting is that podcasts can be produced by almost anyone wanting to share ideas and communicate with the world. Very few restrictions on format. Many podcasters have created exciting ways of communicating and are generally, um, or are generating rather, daily incomes from podcasts. Then we looked at a couple and you said McGee is 
one of your favorites, one of the bigger ones. Then we moved on to delivery methods for multi-platform content, okay? Multi-platform content. Then there were quite a few uh, things that we went through. We said that digital platforms um, are the highway that allows radio professionals and everyday listeners to create and share their content and to promote it directly to potential and current listeners. Okay? That's what we do via digital platforms. Nowadays, anyone who has a microphone, a device that can record, um, and access to the internet can participate in the making of audio content that they can share with the world. Also, all of you have been recording um, Vox Pops, okay, which you can also utilize to post on the internet. Um, that's this kind of thing. That's how these things start happening, okay? The reason for this, this ease of access uh, is on account of the revolution of digital access and the low cost at which the access is made available to everyone. Okay, It's quite easy for you to have internet access and you have a phone with a microphone. The method of delivery or how the audience actually receives the content is what has brought radio into the hands, houses, minds and garages of no normal people. It's about how you receive this content. It's also important, though, to remember that just because anyone can say anything that they like and share it doesn't mean it's good content. There's a big difference between simply saying whatever you want and actually having good content pieces. So creating good audio content takes skill. It takes practice, 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 and um, it does take some talent. So while the delivery methods of audio content have evolved at the speed of digital revolution, the sound concept of telling a powerful story that informs, entertains, and educates people to connect them to each other has um, always been around and will always be, be around, okay, as the reason to make this type of content. So we want that storytelling content. Um, instead of not having access to create your own audio, which is a problem, which was a problem in the past, rather, you now have the problem of navigating multiple content platforms in a way that makes the content as relevant and as meaningful to the right people or to the people that you actually want to reach. Okay, so quite important. The freedom to create content results from, uh, in other issues, which is time and focus. Time and focus, two big ones, okay? The more content that's developed, the more crowded the audio environment becomes. What did I say? I said we are um, information rich and time poor. We have a lot of information, but we don't have enough time to go through it all. So more than ever before, listeners are dividing their attention between more choices mm -hmm. and between tasks that require their attention while they hear the sound of the radio in the background. We say hear, not listen, because we are doing other things at the same time, so we are only only listening with one ear, okay? Real listening requires attention, and for someone to pay attention, content needs to be appealing, compelling, rewarding, and you need to be able to hold my attention. Keeping in mind our short attention spans, right? Those of a goldfish. What did we say? Geller believes that this multitask-friendly ability of radio is greatly underutilized as a strength in the world of digital. So radio is extremely good at creating multitask friendly content because we are used to people listening with one ear. So we've been creating content this way for, for a long time, okay? Um, versus the digital world, which is not quite there. Um, the content that's being created for the digital world is made for you to um, sit and purely focus on this one thing. So that's why radio constantly says things like tune in on your way to work or listen while you drive. So what I was saying is radio is multitask friendly, okay? We've been doing it for years that way because we're used to you doing multiple things at the same time. The world of digital is not there yet. So the internet. The success of a website or a blog site is measured in terms of hits, okay? You get a bounce rate or you can have hits. Certain factors such as the more visitors you get on your site, the more times uh, people visit and the longer they stay can improve the rankings of your website. 
um, or your blog on aggregators such as search engines like Google and Bing. So according to Geller, this is how you find listeners for online radio. It's a, a powerful website, does what all powerful content does. So it informs, it entertains, it inspires, it persuades and connects people to one another. Even though the predominant medium of radio is audio, it's important that the websites capture um, the personality of the radio station in terms of its visual appeal and the user experience that you get if you go onto this website, okay? I don't know uh, how often you go and look at radio stations websites, but you'll see they differ quite broadly depending on commercial or community and the type of station. So the internet is also an audio visual experience. The visual enhance, the visuals enhance um, audio content in a positive way, both for traditional radio and in the digital space to promote and host other types of content. The website of a radio station might also host online only radio content or present opportunities for users to interact in another way with the station's presenters. Many radio stations find that it's not the news or the music itself that will bring listeners to their website, but images of the presenters and the events that they are hosting because people are curious, they want to see what presenters look like or want to go and see what type of events a certain station might have. So for many radio stations, the most popular section of the website is the streaming service, okay, where listeners can access the station and receive exactly the same content as they would on the station. So uh, nine out of 10 times when you visit a radio station's website, you will do so because you are planning to go click on the streaming link, right? Um, I know that's what I do, unless I'm looking for something specifically. So this type of internet listening is convenient. Uh, especially for people like me who listen while, while they are working, okay? Um, or for people who are outside of South Africa who might want to listen to the radio stations here. So this is only a portion of the opportunities that the internet provides for radio broadcasters. The internet provides visual, moving content, content and engagement opportunities to enhance the entertainment and information experience for your listeners. So the internet duplicates the broadcast, okay? Makes it more accessible to streamers and for hosting the audio product in a place that is accessible to many online radio stations and independent content makers. So next, the goal is to get people to visit and explore the website and its various offerings. If you think about how many radio stations we have, if you think about how many websites there are and how many internet pages there are, um, you'll have some idea of how much work goes into promoting a website, okay? It's not extreme, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Then we looked at a couple of tips and uh, that we said could work. And the first one there is develop niche content that you are passionate about, okay? So as with any media, it comes down to the strength and the quality of the content. So many radio stations encourage their presenters to put together audio and copy content on topics that they are personally interested in, okay? So what they're saying is that you need to come up with content that you are interested in. So obviously that makes it niche content. It's also common for producers, news readers, and operations team managers to develop website uh, content. So to come up with content that they can utilize on their website. So this is because the internet has infinite space. Um, so there's a lot more space for me to place large things or long um, links to things, whereas on air, radio does not have in infinite time. Okay, mm -hmm. We have a lot more space um, to place things on the internet. So then we looked at a couple of examples and Bruce Whitfield had one. Then use on-air radio to promote online radio. So use your actual radio station to promote what is happening online. Okay, That makes sense. Employ the use of digital marketing techniques, understand the marketing techniques, okay? Online marketing techniques, how they work. Incorporate sharing links, okay? So that I can go and click on whatever else it is that you are sharing. And then we stopped at increased stickiness. Stickiness means how long you are on a website. So increase the stickiness rather than the bounce rate. So bounce rate is how short you are on a website. Stickiness is 
how long you stay on that website, okay? So you want to increase the stickiness. That brings us to social media. So social media is the internet shorthand, is how they see it. Um, it's about saying or sharing something meaningful, but without taking up too much time or energy from anyone engaging with the content. So there are three ways in which social media um, as a way of communication is very good for the radio world. So number one there, social media allows stations and content makers to build relationships with listeners and content consumers. So we can build that one-on-one -on -one connection. Number two, social media expands the number of revenue generating options that are available to a traditional radio station and, this is, and it establishes a way to build revenue for an individual content maker. How does that work? If you want to advertise something and you want it to also be on social media, you will be paying for it. So that was number two is then we can generate revenue through different ways, like for instance, um, adding your content to our social media pages. And then number three, the social media provides a welcome promotion portal rather than an obviously overt advertising one, uh, which can make people raise their guard as soon as it looks like you're trying to sell them something. I know how I react when someone walks up to me and tries to like sell something to me. I immediately go, mm -mm, I'm not interested, right? Um, so we don't see social media that way. We see social media as a platform that we utilize on a day-to-day -day basis, which is more personal, right? Um, so we don't think of it as people are simply trying to sell us things on here, which means our gods are let, left down a little bit. So um, it means we will interact with your advertising probably a lot more easy, a lot easier rather than we would have if it was on a different platform. So one of the most important aspects of radio stations using social media is its stone. The way in which social media is used by a station needs to be carefully crafted in terms of the words they use. The words should reflect the same tone as is used by the station. It should sound as though what is being said on social media is something one of the presenters would say. So that's why I tell you to go and follow these people, to go and follow the radio stations that you like and their presenters, because it will give you a good indication of how, um, of what the tone is of the radio station. So the best thing by far about using social media is its ability to provide engagement and to break down barriers between a big radio station and, an, and each individual in its listening community. On social media, everyone has a voice. Anyone can say almost anything. This democratization of media gives rise to live brainstorming that allows a radio station to see and to hear what people are thinking and saying without having to conduct an expensive research study. It gives them a lot of open views and opinions to craft their content in real time and to personally respond to people commenting or questioning things on air or online. Okay, We've never been able to do that prior to social media. Today, most people get a multitude of content online without listening to the radio. Think about yourself. Okay. Um, you can get the news, the information, the entertainment, um, the weather, traffic, sport, online, as well as all the music you want to listen to, right? So social media is radio's way of playing in the digital space and disseminating news. So disseminating, spreading, okay, news and information in the same way as they would on air, but using different, albeit shorter and punchier, mediums. So for this reason, many radio stations employ social only promotions that allow people to follow online and win tickets and prizes. So um, every now and then we do promotions that are purely online driven. So we'll only utilize, let's say, influencers and our radio stations um, and our website or our app. And that's the medium that we'll utilize to give these things away. Okay. A lot of the times we might also try to increase our social media awareness or to increase our reach. So radio stations use of social media 
also enables those people to share pictures and experiences of radio station events and create uh, FOMO by using hashtags and handles that support the radio station. Most radio stations draft social media policies and ensure that all radio presenters, operations team members, and advertisers um, adhere to these rules. This is to make sure that there is a consistency at all times and um, that there's a certain standard, standard for the brand okay, to be set. So we um, have to take this extremely seriously. So you need to understand what multi-platform content is. Okay, So it's content that we can place on multiple platforms. Like for instance, if radio is your main medium and you utilize social media, that is multi-platform content. Okay, You need to understand what the difference is between a radio station that uses the internet to disseminate what it does on air. So that uses the internet to stream the content from that station and then an individual who creates a podcast and posts it online. Um, and then you just need to know why is social media advantageous, okay? So we often talk about radio as if it's this living thing that takes on a life outside of uh, the people who work at a radio station. Most stations fall under a specific radio format category. Um, and these are used to track audiences and attract advertisers so that the station can build its media brand. Okay? These categories are referred to as radio or programming formats. So some stations run multiple genres, but most have a, a, a signature tone and a style. So radio formats are selected to appeal to particular demographics and niche, niches, such as a particular age group or ethnicity. Okay. Um, so in South Africa, radio stations have license agreements with the Independent Communications Authority of South Africa, so ICASA, talks, discussions, or interviews, okay. Um, there are specific set of conditions that have to be followed under these agreements or licenses, okay. One of the conditions listed um, on these licensing agreements is the programming format. And it has to be adhered to at all times. So when you are applying for license through ICASA, uh, you will have to define a format and a target that you think will fill the gap of a certain market, both for the listeners and for the advertisers. So this format will be designed to reach a specifically defined niche segment of the listening population um, based on the criteria um for that it costs are put forward okay if your application is successful um, and the license is granted then this becomes the programming format that has to be fo uh, followed it also monitors where the radio stations in south africa comply with their licensing format so there are licensing officers within south africa who make sure that you comply with uh what you should be doing uh, or that you comply with your format so the radio research body of the United States, that's Nielsen, um, has one of the most comprehensive format lists. So they have lots and lots of stations. And a good example is found on page 74. If you want to see a list of the kind of radio stations that they have, okay, that you can look at. So it's, it's like, for instance, they have uh, 80s hits, Active rock, adult contemporary, adult hits, um, all these new country, news, talk or information, new country, um, nostalgia, pop contemporary hit radio, religious, rhythmic AC there, um, alternative, classical, classic hits, classic rock, um, country, easy listening, educational, family hits, Hot AC, jazz, Latino, urban, Mexican, um, Southern Gospel, Spanish adult hits, Spanish contemporary, Spanish tropical, uh, urban AC, urban contemporary, urban oldies, variety, world ethnic. Okay, so there are quite a few uh, formats of radio stations in the US. So if let's start talking about this in terms of South African formats. What 
what page are we on? Um, 74. What formats can you think of in terms of South African radio uh, formats? Music format, okay. If we split it between talk and music, sure, music. There's a hand. Um, entertainment. So interestingly enough, we don't have a format that will be specifically entertainment because all radio stations should have content that is entertaining on the station. If that makes sense, we don't have an educational format in South Africa. Uh, who's hands um, up? What about talk radio? Sorry? What about talk radio? We do have talk, yes. We do have talk, that is correct. Um, Tato? Ma'am, may I ask? Yes. When you refer to uh, a format in terms of radio, would it be something like the breakfast show and... No. So it would be like the options I just gave you. All of the examples I just gave you were different types of radio stations. So like, for instance, classical radio stations or rock radio stations or country radio stations. Oh, OK. OK. Ma'am, um, with Ukozi, I mean, the public broadcast stations, yeah. they have the format of playing those stories, um, I think, uh, for 200 minutes per day. Does that fall under format? Um, the, no, it doesn't fall under format. I'm just trying to quickly think. That's not 200 minutes per day. Um, I'm trying to think. If, yeah, that would be 200 minutes per week. Yeah, yes. Um, but that's also not a format. That is just one of the requirements that they have to follow. Um, Urban. At least so, yes, urban is correct. We have urban music as a format in South Africa. Urban is a very big format in South Africa. We have language specific uh, as a format. So language specific is correct. Language specific uh, we do have, yes. So in South Africa, the majority of our radio stations are either C, so adult contemporary, and we're going to break uh, AC up later so that you can see everything that falls under AC, and we have contemporary hit radio, CHR, okay, which can also be broken up. Um, we have urban, we have speech format, okay, that's the majority of our radio stations fall in with those. So we have CHR, AC, urban on its own as a talk, as a format, and then we have news slash talk, aka speech format radio stations. And when it comes to speech formats, um, we only have four pure based speech radio stations in South Africa. Okay. So someone just asked, Jabalani just asked, the Sunday Field on YFM, does it fall under format? No, it doesn't. Okay. A radio station will have one specific format. What you are referring to now is called block programming. So we have certain shows that we have on the radio station, normally on weekends, um, to attract our P2 listeners, okay? So our secondary listeners. So Power FM is definitely a speech radio station, yes. Any idea about the other three? SAFM. SAFM, yes. 702. Yes. The last one is Cape Talk, okay, which is in Cape Town. So that's the four that we have. That's the four speech-based radio stations. So let's start looking at breakdowns. If I say CHR, Contemporary Hit Radio, what do you think that means? What is a CHR station? Top 40, yes, basically it comes down to it's a top 40 radio station, okay? Um, so a CHR-based station has a top 40 format, so they play traditionally only the biggest hits, um, the largest sellers, new cutting edge music, current hits, popular hits from the last six to 12 months, okay, in a nutshell. 
So this is a breakdown of a contemporary hit radio station, which is in our case, we only have one left and that is 5FM. We do have more, but they are not commercial stations. They are the campus stations. Okay, a few of our campus radio stations are CHR. But this is the only one that we have from a commercial perspective in South Africa. YFM is, hold on, let me actually correct myself there. So YFM um, is a youth-based station, but they're not pure CHR. Um, so what kind of CHR radio station would YFM be? Urban. So YFM would be an urban radio station, okay? Urban CHR, that would be YFM. So still hits, still uh, current hits and um, the youth, but urban current hits, not the pop current hits. So that's a difference, okay? So yes, YFM is a urban CHR radio station. That's the only other one that we have that'll fall under CHR when it comes to com uh, commercial stations, okay? So it's about the type of music that they play and their audience. East Coast Radio, no. AC. CHR is an extremely difficult, yes, 5, 5FM, no to KFM. CHR radio station is extremely difficult to maintain because of the fact that it's a top 40 radio station. So CHR, very, very difficult to playlist because of the diversity and the frequent style changes in popular music. Many CHR radio stations around the world have repositioned themselves um, as formats that originated from the CHR format and represent the new wave of CHR programming, okay? Which is, for instance, where uh, YFM falls in, which is urban CHR. So CHR, extremely difficult to maintain as a radio station. We have more AC stations than CHR, a lot more, okay? Like 80% of our stations are AC. So urban CHR, stations that are listed as urban are said to represent genres that reflect the large number of um, black music recording artists with music such as well, by us, it's not simply rap, hip hop, soul and R&B. By us, it's a lot more in detail than that. OK, um, so obviously we have Ama Piano and we for a little while had come. And what is that new genre now, the Zulu um, genre that we have? That's also quite up and coming. Maskandi. Yes, OK, and we have Maskandi. So we have a lot more music in terms of urban music in South Africa specifically. Yes, Maskandi, thank you again. So music can't strictly be defined by a demographic. So many ethnicities, we know that, um, enjoy urban music. But the description here is intended to define where the original movement in this type of music came from. So urban CHR refers to urban stations that are aimed at a young audience. So in the South African context, these formats are more popular than the standard CHR stations. So I think we can see that very easily when you look at 5FM versus YFM, okay? Um, YFM is a national, uh, 5FM is a national radio station, YFM is a regional station, but there's not that big of a difference between their listenership figures, okay? 5FM is pure CHR. YFM is urban CHR. So what does it take for a station to be in a CHR format? Youth station, first and foremost. Um, secondly, they need to be playing the, the hits, okay? So top 40 format, playing new cutting edge music, current hits, popular hits of the last six to 12 months. So characterized by youth stations specifically. Anyway, so you get other types of CHR stations or yeah, radio stations like dance CHR. We don't have any of these in South Africa, but there are quite a few in the United Kingdom also aimed at young audiences. Um, their music mix relies heavily on mixes from popular DJs with longer music sweeps than most CHR formats. Then you get alternative CHR which is uh, pop rock or rock or alternative hits. Also big in Europe, for instance. 
Um, then you get alternative dance CHR, which is a mix between the previous two, and then we get language specific CHR stations. We do not have language specific CHR stations in South Africa. Then we look at adult contemporary, which is the next one. AC, it's the majority, like I've said, of our radio stations. So AC um, can also be referred to as middle of the road stations. These stations target people over the age of 30 and play a mixture of contemporary hits from the past decade or two. Okay. These stations usually avoid new cutting edge music unless it fits um, the rhythm sounds that match those of the decades on which they are focused. So AC stations are in the business of providing the music that their audience enjoys, and they must therefore keep a close eye on trends within their demographic groups, as well as on trends within the music industry. They need to balance new popular songs with classics that the audience will remember and enjoy. If the music is too old, um, the audience may feel disconnected from the station, and the same thing would happen if the music is too new and perhaps not yet popular. So when discussing their choice of music, AC stations use terms such as variety and mix to describe the selection and presentation of tracks they playlist to create a well-rounded, familiar, but not too retro sound. Adult contemporary, AC, is the most difficult radio format to define because the phrase has been used to market everything from hits to soft pop. AC is for the rockers who have grown up but have not outgrown the contemporary feel. Some prefer rock, they merely tolerate it. AC keeps them from changing their taste just because they change demographic group. However, if there's a station, uh, if these stations are programmed effectively, they can be highly successful. So here is some of them. So Metro is AC, KFM, AC, Heart FM, AC, Smile FM, 947, East Coast Radio, OFM, Gagazi. Um, but we get different types of AC. So Metro is, or Corsi is, Lesedi is, 947 Kaya, Jacarana, Tobelo, YFM, Motswedding, and Josie. But, okay, that's just the uh, top 10 radio stations that I just mentioned to you. Number eight there, YFM is an urban uh, CHR. Everyone else that I mentioned is AC, but are they all the same type of AC? Because in Gagazi, yes. Are they all the same type of AC stations? No, they're not. Okay, so you get different under AC. You get the exact same thing that you got under CHR, which is different types. So you get pure AC, but then you get them broken down. So you get hot AC, modern AC, soft AC, uh, language specific AC and urban AC. And some of these you can break down together. Okay, they might have more than one of these. So if I say hot AC to you, who would you think of? Which radio station in South Africa? Metro FM. You think Metro is a hot AC? Is Metro purely hot AC? What type of music do they play? No, it's not purely because they also play um, um, adult and modern contemporary. So I think if we could say uh, 947 and Jacaranda. 5 FM as well. Jacaranda, no. 5 FM? 5 FM. 5 FM, we say the CHR. Oh, sorry. Isn't the hot um, AC? No, 5 is CHR. 5 of them is CHR. It's the only pure CHR radio station we have in South Africa. 947 is a hot AC. Yes. So what would Metro be? So Metro FM is a hot urban AC station. You see, it's got both. It's got a hot and urban linked to it. Okay. So it's not just a hot station. It's not just an urban station. It's a hot urban AC radio station. So what would an example be of a soft AC station? Kaya FM Jacaranda. Or, or Jacaranda. So Jacaranda, yes. Kaya, you're halfway there. What format of music does Kaya play? Kaya is a soft urban AC. 
Kaya is seen as an urban station, soft urban station. So purely soft AC is Jacaranda, soft urban AC is Kaya FM. Just like hot AC purely is 947, but um, hot urban AC is Metro. And then language specific, which stations would be language specific AC? Lisseri FM or Kozi. Yep. What's that station para, para, hosted yeah. by, 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 oh, what's that guy? That did too, so that station. Um, Lisseri. So, all the ALA stations, all the African language stations, would fall under language specific AC. Okay. So, Ukozi in Klobo. Uh, Tubela, the city, Swedding, RSG. What about Kagazi? Kagazi, I wanted to say that. Um, I honestly Gak start listening to different radio stations. But yeah, isn't Kagazi more of also a commercial radio station? It is a commercial radio station. But they broadcast in Isis Zulu and English. So I was yes. confused, Guti. How do we classify Kagazi FM? Because it's half cozy, half metro. So you understand in terms of content man. so they are seen as a language specific ac station okay. thank you For it was confusing me because they have all these form i mean formats of broadcasting okay so now they do 400 and then mongana lonene and equi fm so they are all the language specific stations okay so what does ac soft ac hot ac chr mean so it's the classifications of the formats of South Africa's radio stations. So South African radio stations, the music stations will have a format. Okay? So we have music-based stations and we have speech-based stations. This, this AC um, and CHR falls under the music stations, okay? So what does AC mean? Adult contemporary, okay? It's very broad classification but it means adult contemporary. Soft adult contemporary means um, easy listening songs, okay? Popular tracks for people older than 35 years of age. Um, and then you said hot AC. Hot AC is now the opposite of that. So uh, aimed for a slightly younger target audience than the traditional um, adult contemporary, okay? Hot music, music that's new and cutting edge, but not so not quite the youth-based um, station, right? So still categorized as um, adult contemporary, but just slightly younger as the average adult contemporary listener. So that's them. And then CHR is contemporary hit radio, AKA top 40, AKA youth, AKA the only one in South Africa that's pure CHR is 5FM, urban CHR is YFM. Okay, this format thing makes sense now, good. Okay, so I'm going to stop it for there for today. So we're going to continue. Um, oh, wait, let's quickly just, I see that we still have a couple of minutes. So let's quickly just chat about the speech formats. So you get different type of speech format radio stations. Um, yeah, so these were your music formats, okay? Hot AC, modern AC, soft, language specific, and urban. Here you can see the breakdown of them. Something important, CHR radio stations have between 350 and 500 songs. That's it. AC have between 500 to 2,000 songs max. What is another type of format that we get? Urban. Okay, another type of format that we get? Urban radio. Speech formats, news slash talk. News slash info, what page are we on? Uh, 80. News slash talk business, sport, talk stations, or political talk. That's the ones that we get. South Africa has four purely speech-based radio stations, and we said these are 702, 
Cape Talk and Power are the three that are commercial stations. And then we have one speech-based station that's owned by the SABC, and that is SAFM. Oops, go back. SAFM, okay? These are the only four peer speech-based radio stations that we have within South Africa. So, these stations are all news slash talk format radio stations, okay? So, what is another format that we get? News slash talk, examples, 702, Cape Talk, Power, and SAFM. Then we get other stations. Um, we have music format radio stations, such as Kai FM, Metro, and Radio 2000, that make use of the speech format for speciality shows for limited periods. So, for example, Metro FM runs 90 minutes of sport talk, um, while Radio 2000 and Kai FM run dedicated political talk shows. Okay, but there's still music-based stations. So, stations that use the news slash talk format feature, um, well, stations that use the news or uh, talk format feature a concentration of news, whether it's local or international news, um, in addition to sport, weather and traffic. So these stations also host featured talk programming where multiple views are presented and listeners can participate in call through segments. Okay, you should have listened to a talk radio station at some point or another. Okay, so do you understand why these are not talk stations? Why Kaya is not a talk radio station? Why Radio 2000 is not a talk radio station? Do you understand that? Yes, I do, ma'am. Okay. So, um, yes, all right. So, South African speech format stations, 702 Cape Talk Power, SAFM, stations that are music-based stations but make use of um, speech format for speciality shows, Kaya, Metro, and Radio 2000. So speech format, you can get in all, um, in, yeah, in CHRA, okay, no, I'm going to confuse you right now, just forget that I just said anything. Um, so if we start looking at the grid for breaking down um, the different styles of formats. Okay, so we're going to look now at CHR, AC, urban and speech. Okay, so this thing that says speech must just come out. It must just look like this. Otherwise, I really am going to confuse you. So this is speech. Speech purely means that they do a concentration, news with sport, weather, traffic. But if we start breaking it down, okay, there are 10 content areas. 10 content areas that are common to most radio stations. And by plotting each format according to these content areas, we are able to compare them rather easily. So we're going to look at the differences between CHR, AC, urban, and news slash talk in every content area. Why is this important? Because some of your assignments would say that you must differentiate four different content types. Okay. Um, so let's start looking here. Music. Okay, we're starting with music. CHR, hits of a pop rock dance nature, current pop songs, okay, current bestsellers. Some relies on oldies and recurrent tracks. Stations emphasize dance or rock. AC, pop music aimed at an adult audience, softer than CHR, heavy reliance on oldies and recurrent tracks. Urban, a range of R&B, rap, hip hop, dance, mellow, jazz, fusion, and gospel inspiration. Stations focus on adults or teens, okay? It can be either or. News slash talk focus on spoken programming. So that's your first one there. Next one is announcing. The next word is announcing. Okay. So under announcing, CHR announcements would be a beat. Okay. Announcing style is rapid and hip, keeping up with the format, varies according to day part. 
AC ranges from light, where announcers just read the liners to personality. Um, announcing style often depends on the day part. Urban could be both. Okay. Um, announcers are the station that are focused towards teen or, or young adults, can just be as upbeat as CHR and um, yeah, ranges from light to heavy, laid back on adult stations. So it just depends on whether you are an urban CHR or urban AC station and the new stage talk. Talk personalities can range from supportive to outrageous. Some take combative approaches, okay? So those are the ones that'll push you and push you and push you to give an answer. Um, news announcers need to sound credible and sports announcers are allowed to be fans. Sport talk hosts take their role or take the role of the expert, okay? Um, and then we can continue with that, but I don't want to continue with that just now because we're going to go into a lot more detail with these. So um, for now, all you need to realize about them is that we're going to start looking at the 10 different types of styles, and we're going to listen to clips to try and identify what are the differences between these, okay? Any questions for me for now? Because there's a lot of information that I gave you in a small amount of time. Okay, so we will continue this uh, next week in person, but on the assessment, you get majority of the answers from the textbook. Do we get penalized for that? Must we paraphrase if, that, paraphrase if that's the case? You will get majority of your answers from the textbook. That's correct. Um, <coughs> You can write it down in your own words, <coughs> as is there, just reference, that's all. Just do in-text referencing. Rather over-reference than under-reference, that's all. Okay, but we'll continue this in your classes next week, um, after we take the first half hour to just go through your box pops and your stations that you're building. Um, but then we'll continue this in detail so that I can make sure you understand formats, the different types of formats and um, the different types of content formats that you get. So then I'm going to say goodbye to you or then I shall see you in person next week. If there's anything else, please feel free to drop me an email and I will help you um, as soon as possible.